Patrick Paul here. A while ago I showed off how I was adding these little voltmeters to almost everything I'm doing nowadays. Um, and I had one of these on each of my seven uh, groups. And I got a wee switch glued on the back. Um, but when I showed it that last time I kind of rushed. And um, so this time I'll show you in a bit more detail how I um, how I set those up. So first of all, um, I've got one here that I'm about to use, and I've just soldered it on to the battery quickly so that I can calibrate it. I've got um, I've got. 3.94 volts, 3.94, and this is saying 3.93. So, so I'm just going to tweak the teeny tiny little pot on the back here using my smallest jewelry screwdriver and so I'm aiming for 3.94 and oh too far 3.94 good that'll do then I'll take this back off and I'll show you the process um, so I've printed a bunch of these little bracket holder things and they just clip in just like that between the cells. So here we go. Right. First of all, I remove a bit of that. I've got some Cat5 wire that is a solid core that's quite nice to use in these delicate little situations. Right. Now, I like to trim off a whole bunch of this excess. Because I don't need it. Good. So, this threads down through there, and that goes through there. That's good. Then Bit of that goes there to hold that in place. And then that will be glued on the back. Just like that. Hold that for a bit. Okay. That's all right. Now, I don't need all that.
and that down there that's all right that's done then That goes there. That goes there. That should work. And then, so that slots in there. Like that. Now, rather than trim all this down, I just poke it down there and hide it. Because um, I might want to use that for something else some other time. Goes there. This ducks under there. Goes shove that all down there. That goes there, and lovely, excellent, simple as that. Um, now while, I, while I'm here, there is a rumour going around that the problem with using these is that they will unbalance your, your pack when the digits are different, they have different amounts of LEDs showing and therefore there'll be a different load on each group. And my hunch has always been that that must be so small to be trivial and of no great consequence, especially given that each group has the same unit, so it's going to be very similar load. Um, with just minor differences and also given that with an on-off switch uh, most of the time you'll leave it off and then when you want to see what's going on you turn it on for a brief moment and that amount of time is not going to be enough to unbalance the pack. But rather than just rely on assumptions let us measure this, measure it and find out for sure. All right, so here's a meter connected up to this variable power supply, so I can tweak that to get different voltages. Let's do that now. So I can, I can tweak that and get different numbers of digits on there. I will shade that a bit so you can actually read that. That's good. And then um, this is my multimeter showing milliamps running through the meter. I'll just raise that so you can actually see that. Good. All right. So in order to be authentic, I'm going to grab some example um, numbers off my current power wall, which is using these. So give me a moment. OK. Let's see what this is saying. And this one here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just write these numbers down and then go over to the bench and set up the um, meter on the bench with these numbers in order to compare. So 3.91, 3.88. Q 
3.85, and 3.87. Okay, let's go back to the bench. Okay, let's try the first one, 3.91. So that is there. Uh, too far. Three four nine one ten point five zero milliamps. Ten point five zero milliamps. So I've written that down. Next is three point eight eight. So we go further down. Oh, wrong way. Three way too far. Three point uh, Can't you do it? No, oh, you can't. Can't quite get to three. Oh, there we go. Three point eight eight. That is ten point seven five. So there is a tiny difference. So, um, the highest current draw was um, when it was reading 3.88 at 10.75 milliamps, and the lowest when, was when it was reading 3.91, which is 10.50. So there's 20, uh, what is it, 0.25 milliamps difference. That's not very much. Not very much at all. I suspect we'll find similar results if I did the um, the next match. And um, to be honest, I can't quite be bothered. Uh, yes, I can. All right. Uh, might as well. All right, here we go. Uh, the next match was 3.91. And lastly, 3.87. 3.87 is 10.63. 10.63. Okay, let's move this out of the way. I'll turn this off. Pull that away. So here's what we've got. Um, this is the top um, power wall batch that I showed you and this is the bottom bottom one and uh, if you look at um, this one here and this one here are uh, the same voltages and exactly the same current so it's nice and consistent uh, 391 and 391 show the same current 385, 385 is exactly the same so what that in 387 is exactly the same. So there definitely is a consistent difference in the current drain, um, but the differences are really small. Um, if you were running a small power wall, like a one kilowatt hour power wall, you might choose to use these if you weren't going to bother with a, a VMS and you would have to go an awful long time for these differences to actually influence the values on your groups. You'd have to have them running 24-7 for a very long time. The moment you start adding a switch and only using them when you're watching, only turning them on when you're actually doing a, a reading, then these numbers are so small that um, it totally doesn't matter. So if you want a very cheap, very simple to understand monitoring system, these work fine. And 
you just got two wires that you put across each group to see what's going on. All right, well, I hope that has been interesting for you. Uh, oh, just before I go, the other thing that I used to use was one of these that you plug into the balance wires. So if you have standard balance wires coming out of your pack, you plug this in. These have a couple of disadvantages. One is they're ridiculously loud um, to the point of being annoying, although they are designed to be an alarm. So they're supposed to be annoyingly loud so that you can hear and pay attention. Um, from a monitoring perspective, it's kind of annoying that you have to wait for them to cycle through. And they kind of flash through really fast, so you have to be really paying attention to read all the numbers. Um, and the other problem with these is that the, this unit is powered by the first group, not by the whole group. So this, if you left it running 24-7, really would um, skew your... Um, skew would place a, an extra drain on the first group. Um, the other annoying thing that I've recently discovered is um, sometimes... So these are sold as eight cell or eight group monitoring pack, um, modules. They call them uh, alarm modules, lithium alarm modules. Recently I bought a bunch that only go up to six. Uh, it's really annoying because I bought them from exactly the same seller and all of a sudden they've started to sell me ones that... Um, will only read up to six. So the last group gives an, an erroneous number. It says that it's running at seven volts or something, um, when of course it's not. Um, so uh, that's another reason why I've kind of gone off these. Um, they're annoying, they're loud. You have to um, really have your wits about you to read all the numbers because they, they flash past so quick. And there's a reasonable chance that if you buy one, it'll only work on six cells, which if you do in a 7S pack, uh, is no good. Um, so I've kind of gone off those. Oh, well, there, there you are. hope that has been useful for you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.